Hey, Sean. Yeah. Cool lens. Thank you. How, how do we look? Looking wide, but in a good way. Yeah, you know? no, exactly. Hey guys, when it comes to branding, it's not uncommon for the mark to be made up of both some text as well as some sort of graphic symbol to bring the identity together. A famous example of this would be the Nike logo made up of both the word itself and the classic swoop. With that in mind, I wanted to look at a cool way that we could animate between the two. We're gonna dive in, have a play with the bull tool, and of course, some MoGraph effect is for a fun animated finish. Let's jump in, see how we can create this effect. Also, if there are any techniques or effects that you guys want to see, please let me know in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Cheers, guys. Just do it. <laughs> Nike, I like that. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's get straight into this one. All right, we're going to start off in Illustrator just so we can set up our splines. You can see here I've got the Nike logo and the swoosh separate from each other on two separate layers here. That's not particularly necessary, but it's just a way I've set it up here. All right, we're gonna save our logo file here. And we're gonna make sure that we save it out as an Illustrator 8 file. And this is so Cinema 4D can read it. All right, let's take our saved file and we're gonna drop it into Cinema. And you can see we've got four splines that have come over from Illustrator. So our first path here is actually that Nike tick, that swoosh. So let's zero out its position and we'll rename that. That can be our swoosh. What I'll then do is grab all three of my other splines that spell out our Nike logo here, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll zero out their position. Now you're gonna notice straight away that perfectly goes to our zero, zero spot, but our swoosh is left floating in the air a little bit, and sometimes this can happen, so just, so I'll remove it from this hierarchy, take it out of that null, remove it from that null, and then we can just zero out its position and perfect. It's now in the exact same spot as our Nike text. All right, what I'll do is drop a connect into our scene, and I know this is gonna be at zero, zero. I'll drop my three splines that make up our Nike logo and drop it into that. We can delete that null, and now we're just left with our Nike connect as well as our swoosh. So with our connect selected, what I'm gonna do is jump into our four views I'm just gonna pull it up so our Nike spline is sitting on the zero point of X. Then by holding down Alt, what I'm gonna do, I'll then drop our Nike spline into an extrude. Now you can see I'm extending our Z depth in the movement and, and we're gonna refine this in just a second. Let's make a copy of our extrude with our Nike text in it. But what we're gonna do is delete that connect and drop in our swoosh spline. We'll turn off our Nike extrude for a second and you can see what we're left with. We've now got that Nike tick nicely extruded. Now let's jump into our four views and do the same thing with this. Pull it up so our base is on that zero point. Nice, we've now got our two extrudes set up. What we now need to do is rotate this swoosh extrude 90 degrees. Once we've done that, all I'm gonna do is slide this along so our start point is right at the edge of our Nike text extrude then all we're gonna do is extend our depth within Z so we capture our whole Nike text. Now it's time to do the exact same with our other extrude. To make this a bit easier, let's rename these. So we've got our swoosh extrude followed by our Nike extrude. Now with this one selected, let's pull it, so, let's pull it back so it starts at the same spot where our Nike tick is seen. You can see by using these four views where able to really quickly identify the start and end position of these extrudes. All right, let's jump back into our perspective view. And this is looking pretty good. We've got this set up nicely. Let's now add a bull into our scene, collapse both of our extrudes and drop it as a child of the bull. Perfect. Now the great thing with this bull is we've got different types of how it can be, we've got different types of how we can actually solve it. But what we're gonna be doing is focusing on A intersecting B. The way I like to think of the bull tool is similar to the Pathfinder in Illustrator. You're able to take a couple of different shapes to either erase or merge them and create some really unique shapes. So now what we've been able to do is create this really cool shape where we've got the Nike visible from the front and the Nike tick coming into play on the, on the side there. So to make this work, we're gonna play around with some different camera focal lengths. You can see when we use a really long focal length, it really flattens out that shape compared to a wide angle lens, which is gonna start tapering in these letters and you're gonna to start to see some of the shapes happening behind it. What I'm gonna do is drop our bull into a connect, 
Let's make a copy of it just so we've got our base, just so we've got our base mesh and we'll change our Fong mode to highest just to get rid of all that artifacting. Let's hit C and what that's gonna do for us is collapse all that geometry and now we're just left with, with this one shape. Let's rename that, this is our Nike plus that swoosh. Now when I spin around this, you can see we've now got that nice tick shape coming into play on the edge there. Now I wanted to, I wanna show you a couple of different ways we can now animate this geometry to get some really cool effects. The first thing I think we're gonna look at is keeping our geometry, keeping our geometry where it is, but what we're actually gonna do is animate our camera. So a really easy way to do this, let's reposition our camera to about where we want it to be. And then what we're gonna do is drop a circle into our scene. Let's change our circle orientation to XZ. And then all I'm gonna do is scale up this circle till it meets about the same point as our camera. Perfect, and now with our camera selected, we're gonna come up to our tags, Cinema 4D tags, and add a, an align to spline. We can then drop our circle into that spline path field, and now our camera is positioned on that circle. Now what we're gonna do is also add a target to our camera. Now rather than using the geometry as our target, I'm gonna add a null into our scene. Now we already know our geometry is set at zero, zero, but let's say you weren't working at zero, zero, and you add a null into your scene. What you can do is drop it as a child of that geometry, hit shift C, reset PSR, and now it's at the exact same start position. We can now use this null as our camera's target. And now when I change the position of our camera along that circle spline, we now get this nice rotating animation and our camera is looking directly at our geometry. All right, let's jump back into our perspective view and you're gonna notice we're a bit low in our scene. And you can see our geometry isn't quite framed up how we would like it. So let's grab that circle spline and I'm gonna reposition it till about halfway through our geometry. I'm then gonna do the exact same with our null, which is our camera's target. And look at that, our geometry is now framed beautifully in the center of our shot. Now animating this is really simple. All we're gonna do is do some real simple keyframe animation within this align to spline. So let's find that percentage that's looking quite nice that really starts to flatten out our geometry and looks at about 76 is gonna work for us. It would be greater to use a more wider camera, but let's stick with this one for the moment. Let's add a keyframe at frame zero. I'm gonna come forward about 20 frames and add another keyframe. This just keeps it still for that initial 20 frames. Let's come forward 10 frames and, we're gonna, and I'm gonna change our position to 100%. And look at that, we've now created this nice animated camera swinging around our geometry. Now this is a real quick, easy way to start animating those cameras and getting some nice movement. Now I've been getting some questions about how to, how to really attack the, the lighting process. Now, something I've been leaning heavily on is Grayscale Gorilla's HDR Studio Rig. It's really quick, really easy, and just by using some of their inbuilt presets, you're able to create some really nice looks. So with one of them selected, we can then insert some render settings. Let's just go medium for the moment. And now when I toggle this preview, you can see we're getting a representation of how the HDR is gonna be interacting with our scene. All right, great, let's make a real quick texture, give it a bit of reflectance, give it some Fresnel for that fall off, and then we'll have a look at what we've got. What I like to do in the Fresnel is increase the IOR just to add a little bit more reflection. Let's turn our preview back off within our studio rig, and let's have a look at this. Now when I hit render, we're getting some really nice reflections from the ground. We're getting those nice contact shadows on the ground. And this is great, you can see that rendered really nicely. And what's great is they've got these presets built in so you can spend more time, you can spend more time on your scene and less, and less on that back end stuff of how to make your scene look great. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go back to our initial connect. I've deleted that merge geometry and I wanna show you something else. What's really cool with this bull tool, before we collapse our geometry, we can actually apply two different textures to our two separate extrudes. And what this is gonna do is hold up the integrity of those textures where they pass through each other. What I've added is that black material to our, our swoosh extrude and then a nice white material to our Nike extrude. And you can see what's happening as they intersect and pass through each other. We've now been able to play with these couple of different textures, which makes for a really cool look. Now what's really cool about how we've built this is at any moment we can drop this out for a different spline or a different shape and create something completely new. So all I've done here is dropped in my SD little monogram. I'm gonna reposition it to the same spot as the Nike text. 
by dropping it into the hierarchy, hitting Shift C, reset PSR. Let's toggle off our let's toggle off our Nike splines for a second. And now let's have a look at this. We've now created, we've now got this look of morphing between a couple of different brand marks. Perhaps you're working on a collaboration. This is a really fun way to this is a really fun way to interact and present and present the mark in a in a more unique way. All right, I'm gonna hide, I'm gonna hide that monogram for the moment, turn back on our Nike text. What I want to look at now is rather than animating the camera, let's actually animate our geometry. What I want to get is a nice spring as this settles into its final position. All right, so now that we've got those couple of separate textures on our Nike and the swoosh, let's make a copy of our connect, collapse it by hitting C, and then now let's rename this Nike plus swoosh. Again, we're going to do some really simple keyframe animation. So with our geometry selected, let's go to frame zero. I'm just going to add a keyframe. Then let's come forward those 20 frames again, add another keyframe, just so we've got that 20 frames at the beginning of, of holding. Then I'll come forward 40 frames. What I'm gonna do is rotate this 90 degrees and add another keyframe. Now it looks like we might have gone off center a little bit here, so I'm just gonna grab our axis move tool and just reposition it slightly and great. Now that's snapped back and our Nike tick is more center frame. Perfect, we've now got our geometry spinning around so we can see both the marks. Now a really easy way to get some nice organic movement as this happens is to add a jiggle as the child of the geometry and look at that. We now get this beautiful animation as this settles into its final position. All right, what we're gonna do now is come, for, come to frame 25 and I'm actually gonna rotate this back the other way a little bit. It's kind of like that rule of turn left to turn right. We're getting that little bit of, that little bit of build up and it just helps and this is gonna really help sell this look. Let's have a look at it. We hold, we turn a little bit, and it's just a, it's a way to sort of show that build up of momentum as we whip around to show the tick. All right, great, this is looking really good. It's now time to animate our geometry into the scene. Let's come, let's come back to frame zero, and with our geometry selected, I'm gonna hold Alt and drop it into a fracture. Now instantly when I hit play, you're gonna see that jiggle has been canceled out. We're gonna change our mode from straight to explode segments and connect. And now that jiggle is still having that effect on our geometry as it settles. Perfect, now that, we're, now that we've got our geometry into a fracture object, we can use all these MoGraph effectors to really enhance this look. So what we're gonna do is play with the plane effector. Let's turn off position for a moment and what we're gonna be focusing on is the scale. Let's make sure it's uniform and absolute and we're gonna make it negative one and instantly everything's gonna disappear. So let's go to our fall off, and I'm gonna give this a positive X, I think. No, that's going the other way for us. So let's go back into our fall off, and we're gonna make this minus X. And then you can see when I slide this along our X axis, our letters individually start to pop back on. Now the same thing, we're gonna add some keyframes for this. So let's go to frame zero and move out and move our fall off all the way to the left so we can't see all our letters are completely disappeared. I'm then gonna come forward about 10 frames for now and move this over so our entire geometry is back in frame. Now as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking perhaps it'd be kind of cool if these letters grew up from below. So let's actually, let's actually go back into our parameter and we are gonna play around with that position a bit. Now I don't want it to intersect with the floor so I'm just scrubbing through scrubbing through, trying to find a figure that's gonna work nicely for us here. Now of course, we want to get this nice organic movement at the start, just like we, just like that jiggle effect is doing for us at the end. So the way we're going to achieve this is by using the delay effector. This has got to be, this has got to be one of my favourite MoGraph effectors for getting really nice organic movement. Now this is popping on a little bit quick, so let's go back into our plane effector and just grab that keyframe we set at frame ten, move it along to frame twenty. And now that pops in a little bit slower, we get that nice spin around, getting that Nike tick. This is a fun little look, and it's a way to start thinking about how to incorporate those MoGraph effectors without using a cloner tool and just applying it to and just applying it to one object. All right, guys, just a quick one for today. Hope you can take something away from it. Jump in, have a bit of a play with the bull tool, dive in, use those MoGraph effectors via the fracture object to really start having a lot of fun and creating some fun animated finishes. All right, thanks guys, see you again soon.